Good evening, how's it going out there folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday night. It is 9.04 p.m. That's California time here, September 23rd, 2025. Latest activity shows a 2.5 and also a two-pointer up there across the Alaska area. Nothing big, just a couple small microquakes out there in the beautiful Alaska area. Need to get back up there. It's been a couple years since I've been up there. Some beautiful wilderness out there for sure. A couple earthquakes out here across the uh, Cascades here, including some around Mount St. Helens. Now, obviously, they've been having uh, quite a bit more earthquake activity around this area, underneath this area, than what's being shown here on the map. Now, this is a very shallow earthquake here, negative 1.1, but you have to account for the uh, elevation here, which looks like it's about 8,000 feet. So this technically is going to be fairly shallow there. Um, maybe up around the dome region just slightly uh, below that now let's go check out the um, seismograph station there real quick I, I've been jumping on here quite a bit in terms of covering this volcano activity because we've seen you know a lot of swarming out there across Mount Rainier and the mountain recent uh, Mount st. Helens here recently so there is a uh, Let's see, when was that little earthquake? So that was just at noon, a little point three. Technically, that should show up, right? It's right there by the seismograph station. So let's go see see if we can find that one. 1209, we'll cover this here in a minute. 1209, or I think that's it. That would be... Okay, so that would be this earthquake right here. I believe that would be roughly around 129, 1210, or something like that. There's a little earthquake. That's a little point three, very shallow. So that did show up quite nicely there across the seismograph stations. Looks like there was another one here later, a little bit smaller. Uh, and then what looks like uh, some more activity here on the graph. So there's definitely some movement happening there across Mount St. Helens underneath the area. For the most part, it's been about four to five miles down underneath the region. But this one here is uh, fairly shallow again. Like I say, just right up here across that... Uh, uh, summit area just a little bit below there. So continue to watch that uh, Mount St. Helen or uh, Mount Rainier really nothing showing up there at the volcano, but let's go double check that just for just for um, Verification here Mount Rainier Here's the seismograph station here real quick And still looks about the same couple earthquakes out there on the map if we go back through the afternoon and uh, morning time period yeah there's uh there's definitely still some earthquake activity out here see that nothing being reported though all right um, the trimmer map here real quick let's go back to that and see what we have real quick that shows um, 201 epicenters of slow slip events there underneath the Seattle and the Olympia area just west of there it looks like that's been the hot spot here in the last couple days. So technically, if we look at the last week, we've got 1,558 slow slip events. That's a change in terms of the location from the previous week. Most of the uh, previous week activity was down here across Northern California and Southern coast of Oregon. Uh, but this week here, definitely looking at uh, some amplified slow slip events underneath the Washington area. That tells us here that uh, this area of the Cascadia subduction zone it's, is straining, building up further steam out here, stress. Obviously, it's a, it's a big old subduction zone, and it's got potential there for some big earthquake activity. Uh, Northern California, really not so much. A couple smaller earthquakes. Um, here is the Mount, Mount Hayward. When did that pop up? <laughs> it's been a crazy last couple days around the Hayward area. Hayward Fault, Berkeley, Richmond, East Bay area. Looks like the last reported earthquake was a 1.5 this afternoon. So let's see what we got here for the total tally with the 4.3 being the largest there yesterday, early in the morning, about three o'clock or so. Um, still watching this, folks. I mean, it it's, uh, it's getting up there in terms of the uh, years that's been building up stress along this area of the uh, one of one of the dangerous fault systems there in the Bay Area 
highly populated region. So just continuing to keep an eye on that. Nothing new to report across the area. A couple earthquakes down here. Uh, looks like that's towards the southern end of the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. Two little earthquakes. The rest of Southern California down here looks, uh, looks like average activity. Nothing above 2.5 out here today. Up into Yellowstone National Park, a couple smaller earthquakes there being reported this morning. Nothing, uh, really nothing new to report. Uh, but I just better double check here the seismographs, make sure that um, that is the case, right? So let's see, that's what it looks like. Pretty quiet out there. There's a couple of smaller events there from this morning. Uh, but really, uh, it's pretty quiet out there across Yellowstone right now. Uh, nothing new to report across the oil fields or the New Madrid seismic zone or the eastern portion of the country. This earthquake here in Arkansas was from this morning. Uh, a little, little two-pointer. Just a friendly little reminder there that the uh, New Madrid seismic zone is uh, definitely active. All right, so let's see what we got here for big earthquake activity, at least in the last 24 hours. That's going to go to a 5.5, which is fairly minimal for a you know for an event here in a 24-hour period. We've seen a couple fives here, but uh, that's me, you know, minimum to maybe medium earthquake activity out here. Nothing above that though. Uh, that, that was down here across the Peru area right along the uh, Prue-Chile Trench, 5.5. Uh, the other earthquake of that magnitude, similar magnitude there, was along the Kermadec Trench. And uh, looks like uh, that's well north of New Zealand. There was another earthquake out here this afternoon as well near Marybank, New Zealand. That's in between South and North Island here. Uh, looks like that's about 78 miles deep here, more than likely associated with the subduction zone that sits offshore here. Obviously underneath this area, these deeper quakes, there's volcanoes and whatnot, but um, that's got to do with the deeper areas here into this region. Let's take a look here at the earthquake 3D globe, see if anything else is popping up here. It almost looks like um, Middle America Trench here got some activity, a couple of fives out there. Pretty decent movement here off the coast of Mexico southward there into the uh, Central America region. Quite a few earthquakes. Um, USGS showing one earthquake here off the coast of El Salvador this afternoon, a five-pointer. But there's definitely a lot more earthquake activity here popping uh, than what's being reported on that page. Same for the South America area. Look at all these quakes here in the last 24 hours. So this is definitely on the move. You can see it. Uh, leaving California and the West Coast out of the mix for now, uh, but that could fill in here. We do have to watch that. Uh, quite a bit, even some way down south here where that seven-pointer struck here uh, a while back. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. One earthquake up in Iceland, a little 2.9. Still swarming out there in Turkey. Goodness. Western Turkey there. That's from that six-pointer that struck here like a month and a half back. I think it's been longer than that. Just an incredible amount of earthquake activity stirring up out here. Um, not out of the question. We could see some larger events in the region. We do have to uh, watch for that with this elevated activity here kicking up. Uh, let's see here. Pretty good cluster out here across the Indonesia area, the typical crunch zone. Also here along the Java Trench, quite a few earthquakes. Um, Japan looks a little quiet up here for now. We did have that 4.6 fairly deep there off of the Dankai Trough towards the southwest here along the plate boundary earlier today, but it uh, doesn't look like anything new to report. Still seeing some aftershock activity up there across the Kamchatka, Russia area with the last quake being a 5.0 from, uh, nope, take that back, 4.5 from this afternoon. Five-pointer there is from yesterday and uh, just late in the night, my time last night. Uh, Hawaii, a couple earthquakes out here. Got this one here, fairly deep underneath the Pahala area. Another earthquake off the west coast there, the Big Island, a little interesting area out there, but I don't think uh, anything changing in terms of the Kilauea eruption process. 
And I say it's a process because it just keeps going and going and going. We're episode, uh, waiting on episode number 34, I think, here coming up in a few days. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look here at the uh, deformation chart. See what's going on underneath the area. Uh, we're still going up. Nothing changing here in terms of that movement. The only thing I noted here last time uh, during episode 33 was this was fairly lengthy in terms of the accumulation time of magma uh, leading up to the eruption there at Kilauea Volcano, but short in terms of the duration. In fact, much shorter than quite a few of the other previous eruptions there. So uh, we're already back up here to where we could see an eruption here in a couple days or so. Interesting. Definite, definitely uh, an interesting event here since December. It's been rinse and repeat cycle there of eruptions. All right, uh, let's see if there's anything else going on there. It does look like New Zealand's got another earthquake there, a 3.1 following that four-pointer. So uh, it's got to be on guard out there. There's a whole lot of maybes, what ifs, and um, a lot of time that's built up here on a number of faults out here across the globe that uh, we could see some further large-scale events here anywhere soon. For now, uh, minimal day, minimal to moderate day of earthquake activity. Space weather activity, see what's going on here. A little sea flare. Notice this here, though, in the last couple hours, starting to show a lot of instability there. Now that is, um, well, there's a lot of sunspots out here for one, but it looks like some areas back over here on the eastern area of the sun are uh, flaring a little bit. Nothing big. Look at that massive amount of sunspots out here. That's quite crazy looking. Uh, this area is fairly well complex. Also back over here. So we do have 4230, 4226. That uh, looks like they may be popping up a little bit in terms of the instability and the growth within that magnetic uh, structure there of the sunspot. So flare threat right now, 35% chance for an M flare. X flare around 1% chance or so, but I'll we'll have to keep an eye on those sunspots. These may want to be bumped up tomorrow, depending on if these continue to grow or not. All right, uh, nothing major in terms of the aurora activity. As you can see, looks like a quiet night there for the uh, sky watchers. Uh, storm prediction center, let's check out the storm reports today see what we got uh, this is for the 23rd uh, no tornado reports although you know this is um, preliminary this just preliminary data right now I did see a couple of photos there on social media of some what looked like tornado damage but it could have been something else could have been some high winds as reported here across a number of states including down there across New Mexico some hell reports in there as well but uh, there was definitely definitely a decent chance there for some tornado activity today, but it looks like that failed to materialize. Uh, remainder threat throughout the evening for some tornado activity, wind, and some hail threats. So just stay safe out there on this uh, Tuesday night. Aside from that, uh, thunderstorm activity there tomorrow. Let's take a look here, see what we have for the uh, the forecast out here. See if we've got any tropical systems coming into the Gulf or the uh, Atlantic. Uh, Eastern Pacific has been quite active down here. There is some, some type of tropical disturbance there as we head towards early next week. Looks like that's going to get awfully close there to the eastern portion of the country. Big old low pressure system out here going to bring me some rain. Thank you very much. I hope. Got my fingers crossed. I hope this comes true because it looks like a decent uh, moist, moist storm out there. Early winter storm. Um, and that's going to be, it looks like, uh, towards the 30th or so, um, early next week. Can't believe it's almost October. That's crazy. All right, um, what do we got here? Let's see, this earthquake at 1.3 just popped up here in the last few minutes towards the Imperial Fault. It's actually on the Imperial Fault. Like I say, a lot of times the earthquake activity will definitely increase down south here. And up along the Middle America Trench and then potentially work its way up this region uh, of Southern California and the West Coast. So we do got to watch that uh, for some further strain and stress and adjustment going on. 
But uh, anyway, folks, I'm going to call it a night. Uh, I've been reading quite a few of the comments out there on the videos. A lot of positive comments, so keep them coming. I do appreciate them. If I get a chance, I will respond uh, and uh, leave a little heart there on the comments, but I do appreciate them. Uh, like I say, I can't get everyone out there, but uh, keep them coming. We'll see you guys out here uh, tomorrow for the Wednesday morning update. Have a good night, folks. Take care and stay safe out there.